Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, please take a moment to subscribe so you can be alerted to future videos that I will be posting. So today I'm going to be talking about how I craft my characters. This will include a list of attributes that I fill out before I even start to write. And I'm going to be posting a link to this list in the description below so you don't have to take notes. Now, in order to create strong three-dimensional characters, you're going to have to create the same kind of attributes belonging to real people. So this is going to include some facts such as their date and place of birth, what they look like, who their nearest relatives are, where they went to school, and things like that. Next, you're going to want to add everything that's beneath the surface. Basically, qualities that make them unique. This is going to be things like their personal beliefs, their likes and dislikes, what they aspire to achieve, uh, positive and negative personality traits, and what they care about, what their interests are. Uh, basically what sets them apart from other characters in the story. Finally, once you've done this, you're going to want to create a list of the supporting characters in your story. And for each of these characters, you'll need to include their age, their physical attributes, who they are, how they relate to the hero and heroine, and what their role is in the story. Now, remember that you're not necessarily going to be using all of the information that you're including in your character outline, but thinking about it and writing down as much as you possibly can about your characters is going to help you to get to know them better and it will also make them seem more real to the reader and more likely for them to jump off the page. So here's an example of a character outline that I filled out. It's for the hero in the next novel that I'm going to be working on. As you can see, his name is Carlton Guthrie, but I've also added Valentine Sterling in there because that's actually his real name. Carlton Guthrie is a pseudonym that he's going by. Um, so the first thing that I am listing is his physical appearance. Uh, Guthrie is six foot two. He has dark brown hair, long enough to brush his jacket collar and to fall over his brow. He has emerald green eyes and he has a curling mustache covering his upper lip to hide the microform cleft scar that he's had since birth. Next, I am listing his place and date of birth and the sort of neighborhood that he was born in or has been living in. And this is important because whether your character is from an affluent upper class neighborhood or from a poor background, it can influence who they are. Then there's the nickname, who their parents are, their siblings, whether or not they have siblings. And I've included also their paternal grandparents and maternal grandparents just because most kids have um, some sort of relationship to their grandparents, uh, whether it's close or not, but the grandparents are usually a part of the children's life at some point, especially when they're little. So I think it's important to note who these people are. Um, then schooling, what kind of education did your character receive? In Guthrie's case, I have listed here that he never made it to Eton. Uh, since attendance there starts at age 13, and this was the age at which his father was killed and Guthrie ran away from home. Uh, then you want to include childhood friends, teenage friends, and adult friends. And these will tend to be different simply because if you're writing a character the way you would uh, consider a real person, who they have as their friend at age five is not necessarily going to be who their friend is when they're in their 30s. You acquire friends at different stages in your life when you go to high school and then later when you go and get jobs or when you travel. So these friends will tend to be different and they should be different for your characters too to make it more realistic. After this, um, you want to write down who they don't get along with and who their potential enemy is. Then what kind of a job do they have? Do they own property? And what are their likes and dislikes? Now, for likes and dislikes, I tend to balance these out. I will write, for each like, I will write dislike, and they usually are opposite each other. So, for example, here, uh, Guthrie likes good manners, but he dislikes impoliteness. He likes the nighttime and dislikes having to wake up early. He likes being surrounded by people and dislikes being alone. 
Next, you want to include some quirks. And I love including quirks for my characters because I find that this really makes them different or interesting or even funny sometimes. So in Carlton's case, he likes sensitive textures. Uh, he's sensitive to textures, sorry, um, which is why he loves velvet and silk. So he just really loves the feel of velvet and silk, which is why most of his clothes that he has or owns are made of velvet and silk. He's also messy and flamboyant. What kind of food does your character like? Do they prefer coffee or tea? Do they have a vice? And if so, what is it? And what are their hobbies and interests? And these are not necessarily the same thing. Hobbies can be very different from interests. Uh, what are their religious beliefs? What is their favorite color? Do they have a phobia? In this case, I have not included a phobia for Guthrie yet. Uh, because I haven't really figured out if he has one or not. Uh, so that one is just, it's blank, and I can maybe fill it in later if I think of something. What would your character's perfect vacation be? What does he or she aspire towards? What do they hope to achieve? And uh, this is really the driving force of the story, because uh, it's going to be the goal of the... It will help you figure out what's your character's goal for the story. Whatever it is that they want, that is what will they will be driven toward trying to obtain. Who are your uh, character's favorite authors? Uh, what is their most treasured possession? In Guthrie's case, it's his father's signet ring because that's all he has left of his father. What was their favorite school subject? And this can also help figure out uh, what their character is like because there's often a difference between people who lean towards the arts versus those who lean towards math and science. What is your character's relationship to their father and to their mother and to their siblings? What was their childhood like? What was their adolescence like? What has their adulthood been like so far up until the point at which you're at in the story? What is their best childhood memory? What is their best recent memory? What are the major emotional events in their life? like? what has influenced them the most and what has pained them the most or made them extremely happy. Uh, this is often going to be something that's uh, deeply influenced them. Uh, so in this case, it, for Carlton, for Guthrie, it was witnessing his father's murder. Um, what are their positive personality traits and what are their negative personality traits? And again, for each of these, so if I'm adding a positive personality trait, I will also add one negative personality trait, just so it's not like there's one positive trait and five negative traits. So just to create more of a balanced character. And remember, like, even your good characters, every hero will have something negative about them. They should have something negative about them. Nobody's perfect. So the more flaws you add to them, the more realistic also they're going to be. What is their medical history like? Have they been operated on? Have they broken any limbs or been in serious accidents? Um, do they have a secret? And I think it's important that most characters do have a secret, that it's not like... Most people do have secrets, right? So your character should have a secret as well. And it, it, it doesn't always have to be a huge secret. In this case, it just happens to be the fact that he has a, a secret identity. That's a pretty big secret. But it could also be something like they're just afraid of speaking in public or they don't like crowded spaces, things like this. What is their biggest fear? Like, what are they most afraid of? Um, so in this case, it is not being able to avenge his father's death. And what are their flaws? And this is not the same as quirks or, you know, anything like that. This is something that's really, um, you know, going to be a bit of an obstacle to them during the course of the plot. It's going to make things difficult, uh, more difficult for them because they might have to act against their flaw. So, for example, in, in Guthrie's case, his biggest flaw is, or he has, you know, two, he believes that killing the Earl uh, is his ultimate goal and that doing so will make him happy. Um, 
except there's more to life than revenge, right? And also, he keeps his emotional distance to others and believes himself incapable of loving anyone anymore. So, um, again, this is like caters to a fear that he has of falling in love, and he's going to have to address this fear if he's going to want to be together with the heroine. So this is the, the list of all the elements that I always include when I'm doing my character outline. Like I said, um, you can grab this list from the link that I've listed in the description below. And then also you should consider the major secondary characters. And you need to consider, like I've said already, what is their role in the story and how do they relate to the hero and the heroine. So I have a whole bunch here that I've listed and this is just based on the character outlines. So really so far at this point it just includes who their nearest relatives are, the hero and heroine's nearest relatives, who the um, their closest friends are now that they're adults. So. I've only filled out one of them at this point. I have to do the rest later, but just as an example, I have here Charles Berkeley, the Earl of Hedgewick. He is Regina's father and Guthrie's enemy. He is 56 years old, five foot nine, with light brown hair showing hints of gray. His eyes are icy blue. He has a solid build, not fat, but not slim, and with rounded features. He is guilty of murdering Guthrie's father because of jealousy and hatred. He walks with a cane now after a serious horse riding accident. He loves his children very much, but is distant with his wife since she's not the woman he hoped to marry. So, and again, both with the secondary characters and of course also with the hero and heroine, the more you flesh out, the more details you include, the better you'll get to know your character, who they are, how they will respond in certain situations, and the more likely they are to just leap off the page and be realistic and grab the reader's attention and make the reader care about them and what happens to them, which will then in turn make them want to read more of your story, right? Which is what you want to accomplish. So it's really important to work on developing these characters. It is a lot of work and it's not for me at least it's not the best part of writing because i often will want to just dive straight into the writing part i don't particularly enjoy the, the character development process and the whole outlining process because i find it tedious and it is tedious it is a lot of work um, but it's important to do because your story will benefit greatly from it and if you don't do it then your characters will be flat and your story just won't be as compelling. So I hope that this has been helpful to you. If you enjoyed this video, um, please take a moment to subscribe so you can be alerted to future videos. And once again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time, take care. Bye.